It's obviously, anytime you're talking about the, the theatre of war, um, things can happen. Mm. How, how do you put this down, though? Because obviously training exercises, I mean, it's not a desk job. Yep. It's still a workplace. Yeah. How do you sort of, um, you know, react to the, to the fact this has happened in training? Is that unacceptable? Uh, I suppose with, with ADF um, service, the, there is an inherent risk during training. Uh, and it does show and shine a light on that. And our brave men and women who put on the uniform um, can be and put themselves at risk even through training. It, this highlights it. Uh, but you don't, you don't think of it as happening. So when, when there's been helicopter crashes in Afghanistan, um, in your mind you're like, yep, yeah, it's Afghanistan, you're in the war and things like that. When it happens during training and it goes into the water and it, it's something that you nearly can't believe and then ships are being redirected. So mm. we've got Talisman Sabre happening, ships being turned around, people that they've served with are out there in the water um, through the night in the morning to try and bring um, our mates home. As to the helicopter itself, so the response from the government is the fleet's grounded. Um, they say they're going through a careful process to see if it's out there again. But we didn't, I guess, hear a clear explanation of whether there was advice not to have it out there. You haven't been on a Taipan, but you nearly did. Yeah, I nearly did uh, in Townsville, a part of a Talisman Sabre a couple of years ago. And uh, there was the Chinook and, and uh, the MRH-90 and we were going out in the Chinook and I said, no, I want to go out in the MRH-90 and I was told that... It makes notice the Taipan, yeah, the Taipan, yeah. for our viewers. Um, and, and they said, no, it's, it was unsafe for me to get into. And if it's it, unsafe for me, it's unsafe for the soldiers. It's unsafe for everyone. So this was someone um, relatively senior? Yeah, senior. I'm not, I'm not yeah, trying yeah. to winkle out a name yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. And they said, Do you, oh, no, you're an MP. Yeah. So this that's was, unsafe. So this was at the time where they were grounded and just coming back online as well in a previous time. I think it was around 2021. 20, uh, uh, I've been very open about my thoughts on the type end. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of the MRH-90. And I think that the sooner we phase them out and bring in the Black Hawk, the better. And it was literally get on the Chinook, not the type end. Yep. Yeah. So it, it was um, said mm. to, to not be suitable for me to get in and... If you can't get a Member of Parliament in it, if you can't get a Prime Minister in it, then you can't get a soldier in it because their lives are more important, I believe, than what we do because they're out there in uniform protecting and serving this nation. Have you sought clarification on the approval process? Because clearly this would have been, you know, a big exercise. They were deemed safe and got back out there. But within the Defence Force... Mm. At least the people dealing with you didn't agree with that. Yeah. So at the at the time when I wanted to to, to get on there, they were flying. So um, there, there shouldn't have been a big issue apart from a manifest kind of reshuffle. I'd, I'd assume uh, they've been deemed through whatever process they went to to go back into the air uh, to fly. Um, we saw what happened in Jarvis Bay at the start of this year, uh, and you know I, I think it's my opinion that uh, phasing them out quickly to get Blackhawks is the best solution. But right now. Right mm. now, our only focus is on the brave men and women um, out there serving and looking after and looking for our four soldiers who are missing. Yeah, it's uh, unthinkable for those families to get, um, you know, that, that credit phone call. Hill Thompson, appreciate your time today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Fab.